DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, somebody up there likes me. <laughs> well, here I am again, starting my 10th year, if you bet your life. I had an uncle once who was on the air for 10 years, but there was a rope around his neck. <laughs> well, tonight, each of our couples, Sir uh, George, I want you to know this, have a chance to win $2,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra 100. And the word tonight is uh, book. Right. Harry Ann Badger and Mr. Jose Luis Flores are waiting to talk to you, so I thought you'd go in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, you need to divide an extra hundred dollars. <laughs> it's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Marianne Badger and Jose Luis Flores, eh? Jose, uh, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve years old. You must take very good care of yourself. You look about forty. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Badger, where are you from? Wisconsin? No, from... Uh, you know where Bemis Point, New York is? Where? Bemis Point, New York. Bemis Point? No. Oh, it's a beautiful summer resort right along Lake Chautauqua. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a residential district for Jamestown. Uh -huh. What kind of a name is Badger? Isn't that a game they play in Wisconsin? Oh, no. We're and a the Duke's old Badger mixture. Game? Huh? We're a Duke's mixture. You're a Duke's mixture? Yeah. You well, mean I was married. Nobility? I was a wolf, though. My name was Wolf. And wolf married a Badger. Yeah. Wolf? Your name was Wolf? <laughs> and you married a Badger? Well, it could be worse. One of my neighbors claims she married a skunk. <laughs> well, you're a lovely pair of contestants, and I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. Now, you understand the game? Yes. Yes, we do. Well, I wish I did. You selected... You selected mythology. That's a pretty high-class category you took there. Who was responsible for this? He is. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you a whole lot of questions. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000, plus a chance later to win 2000 However, if you miss two in a row, it's goodbye, Charlie. Is that clear? You selected mythology. I'll keep asking questions until you either get four in a row right or two in a row wrong. Who was the king who turned everything he touched into gold? Midas. 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 Might as well be. Well, three more right, and you'll have your thousand dollars. All right, who is the goddess of the hunt or the chase? Uh, that was not. Diana. Uh, Diana? Diana at the crossroads. Only two more now, and you'll have a thousand dollars. All right. Uh, where was the home of the gods? Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus. Oh, this kid knows what he's doing. <laughs> this next one's important. One more, and you're with your thousand dollars. All right. What is the name of the wand carried by Hermes? I guess H E R M E S. Hermes. Oh. It is also the medical insignia used in the United States Army. Mm. Talk it over. You have a partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't know it. Well, it's Caduceus. If you get the next one wrong, it's uh, goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> what was the name of the winged horse? Say it. You say it. You say it. Okay. Pegasus. Pegasus is right. You're on your way again. Three more to go. Now, George, there's nothing personal in this next question. I want you to understand this. Who was invulnerable except for his heel? Achilles. <laughs> Who? Achilles. Achilles is right. You're halfway to the thousand again. Two more right and it's yours. Medusa had peculiar things in her hair. What were they? Snakes. It's a fine thing to be walking around with. <laughs> what was the name of the god of the lower world? A Pluto. That's right. You don't go any further. <laughs> now listen, listen carefully. Hear this, man. You want $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can go for 2000 at the end of the show. If you try for the 2000 later and miss it, you wind up with $500 for the night. Now, you go back and think it over. It's an important decision. You bet your life. Now, go over and sit down. Uh, Groucho, we have a special guest now. 
your partner and producer of You Bet Your Life, Mr. John Goodell. Mr. Goodell, come in, please. Meet Dr. Mark. Why, Johnny Goodell, what's on your mind? Well, since this is the beginning of the 10th year of You Bet Your Life, we have a little surprise gift for you. It's from Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith, the directors of the show that make you look so good every week. Here it is. A mustache cut. Uh, we chipped in four cents each for it. <laughs> That's how much we think of you, Groucho. It isn't important how much a gift costs, John. It's, it's the fact that you've gathered around you the cheapest bunch of skin flints in the business. <laughs> Well, that's very sweet of you to say that, but I'm really serious, Groucho. You've been among the top ten of all the TV performers on the air for all ten of those years. That's because... Even that though... was because I stumbled into you one day, John. Well, no, you did it, even though you've done everything contrary to the book. No kidding, all the... You said book, and that's the secret word for tonight. I know it. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> what a sneaky way to get $100, huh? Okay, John, beat it. Walk like a penguin. No, I'd rather not. It's not dignified. Well, if you don't, I'm quitting. This is my last year. Brenda Daly and Mr. Cool Dip Ray Singh are waiting to uh, talk to you. So, for you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and take home an extra $100 between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. <whistles> Brenda Daly and Cool Dip Ray Singh. Huh? Is, that, is that the way you pronounce it? Cool Dip? Yes, it is uh, like oh. the word cool. Yeah, well, I had deep. that this morning in my swimming pool. <laughs> it, and cool it means dip, huh? uh, Prince of Light. Prince of Light. Huh? Well, where are you from, Cool Dip? Well, I come from the beautiful, romantic valley of Kashmir, surrounded by the biggest, wonderful mountains of the Himalaya. Oh. You calling me a liar, did you say? Himalaya. <laughs> the Himalaya mountains. Oh, I thought you meant me. Huh? <laughs> and where are you from, Brenda? Well, I'm not from such a romantic place. I was born in Hamilton, Ohio. And we came out here when I was three, and I've stayed out there since. Well, you may not have come from a romantic place, but uh, you look very romantic. How, how old are you, Brenda? Sixteen. Sixteen, huh? Are, are you married? No. You're not married? You're sixteen years old? I'm sure you must have about ten steady boyfriends if you're sixteen. What is your favorite boyfriend like, uh, Brenda? In well, addition to you, I mean. Let's see. He has uh, black hair and blue eyes, and he's about five, seven and a half. How'd you meet this charmer? See, the school I go to on the corner, there's the thrifty drugstore. And this one particular day, they were having a sale on banana splits. And In the school? <laughs> no, at Drifty's. <laughs> oh. And they were marked down from 49 cents to 35 cents. And the splits were marked down from 49 cents to 34? Yes. 35. 35. And so my girlfriends all decide that we go in there after school. Well, I should think so. Huh? <laughs> Even during school, <laughs> a sale like that. So we went in, and on the other side of the counter where we were sitting, there was a group of boys. And it turned out this girl knew this particular boy, and she introduced us. I see. Well, why were these banana splits on sale? Uh, were they last year's models? <laughs> well, tell me, did you uh, buy a banana split? I bought three of them. You bought three of them? Yes, sir. Why did you buy three? Well, they were so good. Well, if you're going to eat three banana splits, a drugstore is certainly the best place to do it in, eh? At least you're right next to the medicine counter. <laughs> now, cool cat, let's, uh, cool dip. <laughs> How old are you, uh, cool dip? I'm 21 years old. 20? Are you married? No, I'm not, but I was engaged when I was 12 years old. Engaged? <laughs> but the reason is that they establish an engagement by the parents, but you don't see each other until you are unable to continue a marriage career. I see. Well, do the parents see each other? The parents, yes, they talk each other, and, and they, they, they always get a good part of each, uh, each, uh, oh. each uh, boy or girl. It isn't clear, but I understand it. Uh, I hope you do, because I myself don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Now, this is just between us men, uh, Cool Dip. Uh, have you ever had a banana split? <laughs> yes, I think I had, and it's... Uh... Well, could you describe it? Uh... Well, yes, it is uh, it's a banana. Yeah, well, uh, you're s certainly safe so far. Cut in two. <laughs> yes. Of course, without the skin. Not if you're in a hurry, like she was. Huh? <laughs> it has well, three dips of... Uh, it has what? Three... Let's say three... Uh, scoops? I don't want to p put my feet where it is, but it's three scoops, that's it. <laughs> and if some... you put, put your feet on one of these things, it might improve it, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't want you to say the wrong... You get ptomaine poisoning, that's all. <laughs> I don't want to see say the wrong word, because sometimes I do. Uh, uh, and then you choose strawberry, whatever you like. Uh -huh. Splash. Uh, splash on the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long have you been in this country? Nearly a year. Uh -huh. What are you doing over here? Are you working? Uh, no, I came here to see if I continue my pre-med studies of becoming a doctor. Oh, you came here on a scholarship or something? Uh? Oh, you I wish that, that would have been true, but no. No? My poor father is... Well, how'd you get enough money to get over here? Well... Did you come by camel? <laughs> I did halfway, no. yes, but the other way I had to take a boat. You know, they don't swim. <laughs> some, of the, some of the boats do. Huh? I mean the camel. Oh. <laughs> well, you're young and handsome and single. Let me ask you a very profound question. In your opinion, to American girls, how do they stack up against... If you pardon the word stack, how do American girls... <laughs> how do American girls stack up against girls in other parts of the world? I have three type of women, and I think... You have three type of women at the moment? I know. Oh. <laughs> and this is the Indian woman. I bet he's a killer with these names, huh? <laughs> uh, the Indian woman is shy and full of love after you get married. The Spanish woman is very warm vivacious and won't let you go. She won't let you go where? Where, where, <laughs> any place. <laughs> I know the finish. The American women are full of banana splits. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, no, I don't think so. Well, what are the American? The world, American woman has a little of both, warm and cool. Well, are you just talking about girls or are you giving us a weather report? <laughs> Well, that, you, don't you, you think that is a big factor? I, I think it's very sound, Colby. Very good. What you should do is take the American girls out in the summer and Indian girls in the winter. <laughs> now, do you have any other observations about American girls other than their temperatures? I like them. You like them? Very much. And I think that I would marry one. Eventually you'll marry one? Yes. And well, they you have not marry an American girl who's 10 years old, you know. You, you know have to that wait until they're 13 or 14. That is one thing about the American girl. If they like something, they'll get it. And that's it. Well, that's it. Uh, Even right if they're right. five years old, they'll wait for that person. Uh -huh. They won't say it, never. No. They'll keep it right here, but they will, sooner or later they will pump it out. Is that correct? That's fine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you stumble into one catastrophe after another. <laughs> I know I am. I hope I don't, I'm not in a mess with my... Oh, me and I. Brenda, uh, do you go to school now? Yes, I go to Carvalho's Catholic Girls High School. You do. Have you given any thought to the future? I mean, have you entertained any notion about what you'd like to be when you uh, graduate from school? I'd like to become a laboratory technician. Is that where you take blood counts and things like that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. well, why are you interested in that uh, kind of fiendish kind of Charles Adams work? Huh? Well, since I was 12, I've had sort of a biological collection. I have, too, but it had nothing to do with what you're referring to. <laughs> well, see... Uh, could you mind amplifying that a little bit? The well, audience and Cool Dip and me? Well, I have... What do you have in your collection? Calf's hearts. A calf's heart? Yes, uh -huh. and cow's eyes and grasshoppers and spiders and bacterial cultures and blood cultures and a whole bunch of things. You know that practically everything you mentioned is part of me? And <laughs> I've got a calf's heart, cow's eyes, and grasshopper legs. <laughs> That's a pretty macabre collection you've got there, Brenda. Cool dip, do you have any hobbies that we could freely discuss here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you think of uh, cool dip, Brenda? Oh, he's real cool. Is that good? Yes, that's good. Well, my name is good then. Cool, cool dip. <laughs> Tell us about your well, hobbies. Well, after my hobbies live in my country, 
is uh, I like to sing very much. Oh, really? Yes. Well, have you studied singing? Yes, I have studied as a hobby, together with my career. Mm -hmm. about what kind of singing, singing do you do? Oh, I'm a baritone. Oh. I like opera, and I love the beautiful love songs. Mm -hmm. Do you do any of the uh, Presley kind of stuff? Or? No, I am. You're not a hip shaker, huh? I, I can't move like that. I do it better looking. Oh, I see. Well, you you are better looking too. Eh? <laughs> well, uh, do you plan on making a career as a singer? There is something I love to do it, but I don't know if this wonderful American audience will accept me. And if they would, I would be, must be I would be much delighted to be the ambassador of my country to this. Well, it's a city. tough decision. You could give us a few sample bars of your voice. Could Perhaps I? Perhaps our listeners could help you make a decision. Would you want to give it a try? Well, all right. Would you need a band? Uh, sure, I think it's... Uh, thank you. I will There's a lot of women out front are planning on leaving their husbands. Uh, they are very... As soon as this here, is they over. they look all beautiful. <laughs> oh, boy, is he a shoe-in, huh? No, I mean it. I mean it. I do mean it, really. <laughs> what song would you like to uh, hack away at? Well, since we have been talking about women, what about a woman in love? A woman in love? Well, what about a woman? What, what key would you wobble that in? The key of G. Mr. Macon, uh, could you, uh, your group, give Mr. Sing Sing a hand with, uh, <laughs> with uh, woman in love in the key of uh, G. G? Well, we're going to leave it up to our listeners, Cool Dip. If they think you ought to become a singer, they're going to write and tell you so. And be sure to let us know how it turns out. I will love each little thing of them. It's, it's a great help. <laughs> you just write in. If you want him to be on a show, I'm sure he'll get a show of his own. Well, you're nice youngsters, and I think you sing real good, and you have a wonderful personality, and I wouldn't be surprised if you and Brenda get married inside of six months. <laughs> and have a half a dozen little banana splits. <laughs> well, right now, your future depends on how well you can play your bet your life, and since you're a college man and you're a college girl, high school girl, you, this ought to be a cinch for you. You selected wild geography. Remember, if you miss two questions in a row, you're out. If you answer correctly any four questions in a row, you win $1,000, plus a chance to try later on for the $2,000. Good luck. You selected world geography. Remember, I'll keep asking questions until you either get, either get four in a row right or two in a row wrong, and just one answer between you. Are you ready? Here we go. What is the largest city in Canada? Talk it over, your partners. I know that one. <coughs> You don't know guests. Vancouver. No, I'm sorry. It's uh, Montreal. Well, you have one wrong. Don't get another one in a row or it's all over. I know it. <laughs> okay. In what country is the Matterhorn? The what? Matterhorn. M-A-T-T-E-R-H-O-R-N. In what country is the Matterhorn? Do I have to say the country? Uh, yes. Italy? No, I'm sorry. It's Switzerland. Well, you missed two in a row, so you're all through. <laughs> uh, however, we want you to have something to remember us by, so I'll give you one more question for $100. Here's the question. Ready? Uh, how many cylinders in a V8 engine? Eight. Eight, Eight is absolutely right. <laughs> That's right. Sorry you didn't win more. Sorry you didn't win more. Goodbye, Brenda. Well, that means that our first couple, Mrs. Badger and the little boy, who got four in a row correct, are entitled to try to double their $1,000 and wind up with $2,000 for the next... Well, Bring him in, George. Bring him in. Here are Mary Ann Badger and uh, Jose Luis Flores, who answered four questions right in a row, and they're going to try for the extra $1,000. Okay, here we go. It's a big gamble. You know what this means? I'll give you one question. You get it right, you win $2,000. If you miss it, you wind up with a total of 500 for the night. You bet your life. Is it clear? Yes. All right, here it is. For $2,000, who was the father of the present Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> What's the answer you decided upon? George, George well, sixth of England. George, the... King George, the... The... Which one? 
but the fourth or the sixth? The sixth. Right, right, King George the uh-huh. sixth. <laughs> What are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to have a home. Well, you've got to start anyhow, huh? That's a good start. Well, good luck to you both. This is George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. September is Child Safety Month, so parents teach them to cross at corners, obey.